Well, good day, everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. This is video three in a series of videos of asking about um, why glass is transparent. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so we've uh, kind of, we started at asking a question that led to um, another question um, that has led us into this picture that I've drawn here. Um, so, what we found out is that when we have lots and lots and lots and lots of atoms, um, they're going to be in, it, it comes together in a solid and they're going to be interacting. There's going to be lots of um, uh, attraction and repulsion going on. And what that does is that creates several bands, a group of, of what we call bands of energy or quantum states that um, the electrons, specifically what we're talking about here, the electrons can exist in. And then um, I, I have these area of bands called valence bands at, at generally lower energies. And then I have these other bands of, of quantum states, allowed quantum states at higher energies. And there's generally a gap in between the bands. And we need exactly the right amount of energy to get an electron across this gap. Okay? All right. Um, and this is actually known as band theory. Um, if you take like solid state chemistry or um, uh, I, I would assume maybe you know, descriptive and organic chemistry uh, and maybe some general chemistry, um, you probably cover this uh, or something kind of like this. Um, so what the heck does this have to do with the original question? Well, remember when I drew the picture of the atom and I said, hey, for to one of the ways that we can get an electron from n equals 1 to n equals 2, and let's say hydrogen atom, is to hit that electron with a photon that has exactly, exactly the right amount of energy to get the electron from n equals 1 to n equals 2. If that photon didn't have exactly the right amount of energy, if it was maybe just a little shy, maybe just a little shy, but barely, that electron ain't budging. It's not going anywhere. It's going to stay at n equals 1. I need to have exactly the right amount of energy. Well, the same thing is true here. That if I wanted to get an electron from down here into these bands up here, I would need exactly enough energy to clear that gap. Okay? To clear that gap. Well, let's go ahead and redraw this. And now let's say... That I have a window, I have glass, I have a, a window of glass. And we'll just redraw this. This is my energy here. And, you know, I'm not going to put specific values because I don't think we really need to put numbers to understand um, conceptually what's going on. And uh, here I have um, these lower states of energy here. Okay. These bands of quantum states at lower energies and then I have these bands of quantum states up here, high energies. And let's say that I've got a little electron maybe here. All right. All right. Now I have some visible light coming in. Some visible light. Okay. Some visible, visible light. And visible light, what it, uh, we generally say it has a wavelength, a lambda of about 400 to 700 nanometers, right around in there. Um, so right about in the middle of the electromagnetic spectrum. Less than 400, um, uh, of course, is going to be higher energy ultraviolet. Um, even smaller than ultraviolet wavelengths is going to be uh, things like X-rays and, and gamma rays. Larger than 700 are going to be very low energy photons like infrared, um, longer than that, you're looking at microwaves, longer than that, and you're looking at radio waves. So, visible light's kind of in the middle. Well, let's just say that the visible light in our, our, our glass does not, does not have enough energy, enough energy to clear the gap. Okay? clear the gap. So this photon comes in and it does not have enough energy to promote this electron up here. So is this photon going to interact with the electron? What do you guys think? 
No, it's not going to do anything, right? Um, because the electron is only going to, basically the electron is only cares about light with enough energy to get it up here. So what's going to happen? Well, this photon of visible light is just going to pass right on through. It'll pass right on through. The electron's going to be like, hey, sorry, sorry, mate. I, I, you know what? You, you're not doing it for me. Keep on going. And that visible light's going to keep on going. And if I have, uh, I'll try to draw my eye. Boy, that's that's horrible <laughs> drawing of an eye. But anyway, that visible light is going to go right on through the eye. Okay? And that is actually what happens with glass. Or with glass that we can see is that um, visible light doesn't have enough energy to, to, to uh, be absorbed by the electron. Now let's say that I had something like ultraviolet light. Maybe I had light at 200, 200 nanometers, okay? Uh, well, I shouldn't draw that in red because red is actually long wavelength, but uh, let's just pretend <laughs> um, this is a very, sh a very short wavelength, ultraviolet light, and that ultraviolet light has enough energy. So what's going to happen? Well, that light will be absorbed by the electron, and then the electron will move up into the conduct um, the conducting band there, right? So the light gets absorbed and it doesn't make it through. So if I had maybe a little ultraviolet detector here, the ultraviolet, the, the ultraviolet light would not make it through. It would be absorbed by the glass and then the electron would pop up to higher energy. And then of course we know that maybe the electron um, can go back down to lower energies and when it does that, it, it releases light Right, it releases a photon, um, but in some cases, in a lot of cases, that photon is actually going to be, you know, it, because it, it, there's some wiggle room here. Um, the electron can, you know, go down a little bit, and it'll release a little bit of energy. But instead of releasing, you know, um, you know, if the electron went all the way back down here, of course, it'd release the same amount of energy. But if it just went down a little bit in, in, inside of this band here, um, it would release a very, very long wavelength. Um, and this would be infrared, right? Um, it would release infrared light, um, which is heat, basically. Well, it, it kind of, um, but uh, I won't even go there. Uh, but it releases a low energy uh, wavelength, and obviously we, we can't see that light. But I think that the big point is that um, ultraviolet light is, glass is opaque to ultraviolet light. Because ultraviolet light has enough energy to get the electron across the gap. Okay, so hopefully that helps explain why glass or window glass is transparent. And, and really it's not transparent. It's only transparent to visible light or light um, that is, that is, um, has less energy than visible light. Let's say that I had a radio wave or let's say that I had infrared um, light, you know, that would be able to get that would be able to get through the glass as well, right? Because um, it certainly would not have enough energy to get the electron up. Um, but high energy um, light, like um, uh, ultraviolet light, would be able would uh, not be able to get through the glass because it would interact with the electron and it move the electron up um, into the conducting. Uh, Conducting? Did I say conducting band? Um, yeah, it move it up into the the higher um, energy states um, of the the um, the upper 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 band. Um, move it out of the the valence band. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here, and we will finish it off in another video. As always, thanks for hanging in there.